Welcome, willing workers, to our lesson for Sunday, February 4th, 2024. Our lesson today is entitled Promised. We uh, begin to see Abraham. Uh, of course, he is called Abram at the very beginning. We take our lesson today from Genesis chapter 12, the first five verses, and then we move to chapter 13 and look at nine verses, 11 to 18. The theme of our lesson today is God's blessing, which he gave to Abraham, is seen in the promises that God keeps. Now, before I go to the scripture uh, for today, I'd like to deal with uh, who is Abraham in terms of lineage. Uh, you may be familiar with uh, people who've created charts. Well, I created my own chart based on my studies of the scriptures, and uh, I have. Uh, I'm going to use it as a reference here to let us know where we are looking uh, at Abraham and where he comes from. As we go through the lineage from day from the very first day, uh, I begin it with Adam, who was created. And that would have been day zero. Uh, as we move through the lineages in uh, Genesis, we're able to develop this chart. And we see that uh, about the year 1056, 1056 years since creation, Noah was born. We read that Noah was born in Genesis 5:29. Now, we also know that Noah lived 950 years. Uh, scripture tells us that when Noah was 500 years old, he had three sons. Shem is the one that we will look uh, through, although we are given Japheth's and Ham's lineage after the flood. Uh, it will not be looked at, but Shem is the lineage that we look at. Shem would have been born sometime around 500 years after Noah was born. And so I place that at the year 1558. This would be the time God called Noah to start building the ark. And uh, Noah would have been 600 years old when the ark was complete. From Noah, we moved through Shem. Uh, we moved through Shelah, Eber, Peleg, Reu, Serug, Nahor, and Terran. Ter, excuse me, Terah. And then we come to Abraham being born. We can put Abraham's birth at about the year 1951. This is after the flood, of course, and Abram is born in Ur of the Chaldees. I think that it's interesting to note that after Abraham was born, he was alive. He had he was only about uh, 55 years old, and Noah was still alive, but Noah died in the year 2006 after creation. Then we move on down, and uh, I'll not go into much detail, but I think it's interesting to note that Abraham dies at 175 years of age in the year 2152. Our biblical references for all three of these, Abraham's birth is Genesis 11:26. Noah's death is in Genesis 9:29, and then Abraham's death is in Genesis 25:7. Now, of interest is that Shem dies in the year 2158. So Shem outlived Noah by six years. We read that Shem dies in Genesis 11. 11. Uh, so we have someone from before the flood, Shem, who fathered through eight sons, 
Abraham. So we have nine generations from Shem to Abraham in this chart that we're looking at. All right, let's go to our verses for today. See what uh, Moses had to say under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Verse 1 of chapter 12. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I emphasize these words because it's important to understand uh, the future that goes on. And God continues, And I will make you make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you. I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. And Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered and the people that they had acquired in Haran. And they set out to go to the land of Canaan. Now we move to chapter 13. And we have uh, Lot and Abram have been uh, trying to exist together with their vast herds in a very uh, sparsely pastured territory. <coughs> we read in chapter 13, verse 11. So Lot chose for himself all the Jordan Valley, and Lot journeyed east. Thus they separated from each other. Abram settled in the land of Canaan, while Lot settled among the cities of the valley and moved his tent as far as Sodom. Now the men of Sodom were wicked, great sinners against the Lord. The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, Lift up your eyes, Abraham, and look from the place where you are, north, south, east, and west. For all the land that you see, I will give to you and to your offspring forever. I will make your offspring as the dust of the earth, so that if one could count the dust of the earth, your offspring can also be counted. Arise, Walk through the length and the breadth of the land, for I will give it to you. So Abram moved his tent and came and settled by the oaks of Mamre, which are at Hebron. And there Abram built an altar to the Lord. Of course, our lesson today shows this beginning of Abraham, Abram or Abraham's journey that set in motion God's redemptive plan that he had planned before the foundation of the world. And it culminates, of course, in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Without Abram's first step of faith, this world would be a very different place. As with any journey, Abram's pilgrimage of faith took many twists and turns. There were sad detours of disobedience on Abraham's part and great acts of trust also on his part. Abram's example has stood the test of time. Chapters 12 to 14 here in Genesis sets the stage for Abram's story, highlighting God's covenant relationship that he makes with Abraham. His deception, Abraham's deception in Egypt, Abraham's relationship with his nephew Lot, and Abraham's encounter with a mysterious priest king named Melchizedek. 
Central in this narrative are the obedience of Abram to God's call upon him and the covenant of blessing promised by God through Abram. Although Abram left his home in Mesopotamia, God promised an even greater homeland in Canaan. And eventually, Abraham's descendants would create a nation that would bless the world. Let's talk about, as we move on into our lesson, let's talk a little bit about Abraham's covenant. In the Abrahamic covenant, God made seven promises to Abram. God said he would lead Abram to a new land. God said he would bless Abram. God said he would make Abram's name great. And God said he would make Abram a blessing to other people. God also said he would bless or curse other people based upon how they treated Abram. And God said he would bless all people on earth through Abraham. And this foreshadows the coming of Jesus Messiah. In our verses today, in verse 1, we read the phrase, The Lord said, God had a covenant, made a covenant with Noah at the end of the flood when they came off the ark. We studied about that last week. In this lesson today, God speaks to Abram and he announces another covenant with Abram. And Abram was to leave his home uh, go to a land that God would show him. God didn't say where. Just leave your home. Uh, can you imagine uh, someone hearing the voice saying, I am your creator God and I will bless you. I want you to move from your place. And uh, uh, we read what was said further there. Abram continued to Canaan after his father Terah's death in Haran. You recall that uh, the scripture tells us that uh, Abram lived in Ur of the Chaldees. That would have been the area of Iraq that in uh, olden days, ancient days, would have been Babylon. And he moved northward and eastward or westward toward uh this place uh, called Haran. Now that gets confusing because we also read of a brother of Abram whose name was also Haran. But he is only in the picture briefly. He's referred to as having died at a young age and leaving Lot as his son. And that would make Lot the nephew of Abraham. God said, go. Ancient covenants that men made with one another were bilateral. Each party agreed to certain responsibilities and benefits as a result of that covenant. But when God makes a covenant, it is one-sided. <coughs> Abraham's role was simply to obey God's covenant. God said, go. And that's what Abraham did. He went. Uh, and of course, we read that in verse 4. Abraham went. This was Abraham's first step in faith. It was an obedient step to what God had told him to do. We uh, know that Aaron, uh, excuse me, Abram's father, Terah, was an idol worshiper. We learned that in Joshua chapter 24. But we also learn here that uh, in verse 4 that Abram, when he was called and left his family, was 75 years old. Uh, and uh, he faced obstacles simply because of his age. Uh, his wife had been barren for as long as they had been married. 
At 75 years of age, it is possible that Abram had been married more than 50 years to his wife, Sarah. She was 10 years younger than he, and he most likely was wedded to her at her very young age, probably a teenager at the time. We meet Sarai, as she is called at this time, and her her name means princess. God changed her name later to Sarah. He did that in chapter 17. The name change highlighted a new destiny for Sarah because she would bear a child in her old age. Uh, she would give birth to Isaac. In verse 5, we read that people that Abram had acquired, Abram and Lot both had acquired, these people were male and female servants, and Lot, his nephew, had acquired them as well. It would have meant that the number of people would be a large number of people moving across the deserts and the dry plains into this area called Canaan. And uh, their possessions would have been great because they would have had large numbers of herds uh, and flocks and the sheep and goats and cows that they owned and kept. Uh, we read in verse 11 of Lot. Lot was a wealthy man in and of himself. He had many possessions as well as livestock. God's blessings upon Abram also fell upon Lot. But I do want to point out that God had instructed Abram to leave his family, to leave everything and go where he was instructed. And yet Lot came with Abraham. That is against what God had requested. Apparently, uh, well, we'll see what happens because there is contention that occurs between Abraham's people and Lot's people. But at this point in time, whatever blessing God had put upon Abraham, Lot also was blessed. Their flocks had become way too big for the land they were on to support. And the herdsmen would get into arguments, maybe even fights, over the right to graze their particular flocks and herds in particular areas. There were many disputes, according to Scripture. So Lot's descendants became the Moabites and the Ammonites. We know of that because Lot settled in Sodom and he was saved. He and his family was saved uh, from the destruction of Sodom. However, Lot's wife looked back in disobedience to the angel's uh, commands, and she died and became a pillar of salt. So Abram, I mean Lot's daughters, living in a cave up from Sodom, decided that they were not going to be able to find husbands. So they decide they get their father drunk, and one of them has a child named Moab. The other has another child named Amma. And now we have the Moabites and the Ammonites that the Israelites must encounter when they come back into the land. We read of the Jordan Valley in verse 11 of chapter 13. Lot had rejected the land of promise that God had chosen Abraham to have. Instead, Lot, Lot chose a more exotic portion of the land. It says that he looked out over the Jordan Valley. This would have been the land that lay to the east of the river Jordan. And it was down in the plain area where you would find 
the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. There are other cities which I will get to in just a little bit. This area would have been a lush, green area, fertile, but just a short while later, it would become a flaming brimstone and hail of fire place to live. Sodom is known for its wickedness, its evil. It had been there for centuries already, and uh, it was a horrible city. And there were other cities on the plain uh, there, but Sodom would have been considered uh, the most wicked city because of its unnatural lust. And we read about that in chapter 19, where the men of the city came and demanded Lot turn over these angels who had come to them. Uh, it was also noted for pride and social injustice. We learn about uh, these abominations that they committed in Ezekiel chapter 19, verses 49 and 50. Now the Bible tells us that Lot journeyed east. This is another example uh, from our last lesson last week where moving east meant moving away from God. It was a symbol of separation throughout the book of Genesis. Abram decided he would settle in the land of Canaan. This word settle means that he picked a place and decided to live there. And uh, he made it more of a permanent dwelling place. Abraham had already traveled all around the land. He had built altars to worship God at some of these places. The cities of the valley. This is the ones that Lot went to. Here are the cities that uh, occupied the fertile plain of the eastern Jordan River. Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma. Zeboihim and Zohar. Those were the five cities. Their kings are referenced in Genesis chapter 14, verse 2. Sodom, of course, was the chief city among the group. And this entire lush green valley that these cities inhabited would be burned by fire from God's wrath over their sinful and evil activity. In verse 13, this word great, this Hebrew wording describes more than just large. It reflects the degree of or the magnitude of the sin of the people of the valley. The same word is also used to describe Abram's vast wealth. His wealth was great. Wickedness was a powerful presence in the cities of the valley. And that influence filtered out to all the other cities in that region. In verse 14, we see the word look. God told Abram to look around you. Look at the land, all the land that you could see. God said, I'm giving it to you. Lot chose the valley for himself. Abraham and Lot stood together. And Abraham said, Lot, you choose. Whichever you take, you go that way, I'll go this way. Or if you want to go this way, I'll go that way. So Abraham graciously allowed Lot to make his choice. And Lot chose the sinful area because it looked good. And he went there. To look north and south, east and west, everything Abraham could see in those directions would be his inheritance. And unfortunately, it would not take place for many years because God promised that his, his descendants must first be in slavery for 430 years. 
For Abram, though, mentally and spiritually taking possession of the land was a step of faith as he trusted the promises of God. Sarai's barrenness, the prospects of an heir, were quite dim because Sarai was getting old, older, (laughs) as was Abraham. In verse 15, this word forever, prophecies throughout the Old Testament pointed to the permanency of God's gift of the land to Abraham. It continues to be a sticking point even today among the people who live in that land. This word offspring, it uh, God had told Abraham, your offspring will be as many as the dust of the earth. If you can count the dust, that's how many people will come from your loins, Abraham. He also God also used the stars of the sky. And he used the sand of the seashore to describe the descendants of Abraham. In other words, there was an inability of any person to place a number on how many descendants Abraham would have. And that, of course, is true because we as Christians are also descendants of Abraham through faith. Now God says, arise and walk. He instructed Abraham to walk through the land and to claim the land as his inheritance from God. And Abraham did. And then he settled at the oaks of Mamre. Mamre, the word means grazing land. It became the primary dwelling place for Abraham. It was located, Mamre was located about two miles north of Hebron and about 19 miles south of Jerusalem. That will give you a little better indication of where it is in the land of Israel. Abram later purchased a cave in that area, the Oaks of Mamre, to bury himself and his family, his family plot. We have that story also at the time of Sarah's death. Abraham built altars. He built several altars, but here in verse 18 we read that he built an altar at the Oaks of Mamre. Abraham worshipped God, thanking him for his favor. Genesis mentions Abraham building altars at Shechem and on Mount Moriah and worship God at these places. It was an integral part of Abram's life. He expressed his gratitude for the intimate relationship that he had with God. I pray that as Christians we develop and are developing an intimate relationship with God, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us the story of the beginnings of faith in you through Abraham. And we who believe in your son, Jesus Christ, his perfect life lived and his atoning death covering our sin through faith alone, as Abraham expressed his faith alone in you. We find salvation uh, from our sins. So, Father, help us to consider Abraham and all that he did by faith, that we might live also by faith alone, in Christ alone, in whose name I pray. Amen.